I love to go to uh, see my friends, the Hoshocks. There was, uh, this is always on Christmas Eve. I had gone over to their church, my parents' church back in Defiance, Ohio, one Christmas Eve said they were going to have midnight mass at eight o'clock. And I said, you can't do that. The name implies when you're supposed to have it. So I drove 11 miles over to my buddy's church and the church was packed. I didn't know he was there. I mean, I go inside and he's right in front of me. This is a guy that I was in high school with. We were in National Honor Society together. We were on the wrestling team. We were in track together. And he didn't know I was behind him, so I'm pulling on his hair. <laughs> and we're sitting in church, and finally he turns around and looks, and we both have to keep from laughing. And after the midnight mass was over, he says, come over to Dad's. I said, what are you talking about? It's 1 o'clock in the morning. Well, you know Mom died last year. We don't want Dad to be alone, so everybody's coming over to the house. And I said, oh, okay, I'll come over. And he said, yeah, we're going to have some ham sandwiches and tequila. I said, it sounds great to me. <laughs> and I show up. Now, when I go to my friend's house, usually, if I'm going to go to somebody's house, you know, you want to take something. I show up at 1.30 at their house, and they're giving me so much guff. Hey, Tony, you didn't bring anything? We got all the food over here. Where's the six-pack? You didn't bring nothing? I said, I was going to church. I didn't know I was supposed to bring anything. And that started a little tradition. From 1981 on, anytime I go to their house, I'll bring something, except on Christmas Eve, yeah. And then I find, like, instead of bringing any liquor or any food, I find little goofy things to take to them. One time I found antique replica baseball cards. These guys, the whole family is just crazy baseball people. And I passed them out. I got them at Building 19, and they were swapping them. Another time I went over, and I found little green pickles for Christmas ornaments. And I gave them to everybody. <laughs> Last year I wrote them postcards. <laughs> Two years before, I'd given him a kazoo. And then I forgot that the year before, I'd given him a kazoo. I guess it's middle age. And I thought this year would be especially good. My coffee shop has these blank white mugs that I go get my coffee from. So I save them all and rinse them out. And then I just draw all over the outside of them. So I'm going to go over. I have no illusions about being like a, what I would consider a real artist. I'm just a doodler. But if I can make my friends laugh, I think they'll really appreciate that, oh, he's given us something that was going to go in the trash. And now he's drawn all over it. And I have one more over here that I want to give to Cheryl. It's just a tiny little thank you because it's got like a bookshelf. And everybody here is a different book on the shelf. It's just a small holiday thank you. In the details. I don't believe God had anything to do with anything that happened when things were really wrong and when I worked hard to make them right. I'm not looking for a miracle. We're all doing our best with what we have. What gives anyone the impression there, that there is some kind of higher power involved? I feel a spirit when raking leaves, picking up the red ones and stuffing them into my pocket. The red was so red. The imper imperfection, so perfect. Is God there somewhere? If anything will bring me closer to belief, it is crunching leaves underfoot, the sun on the reservoir late on a summer day, the heat on my back as I walk along. I don't need to hear about miracles now or 3,000 years ago. I just want to feel it. If I smell the ocean in the breeze, if I taste a sweet, ripe plum, if I hold my son in my arms at night and he holds me back, is that God that I feel or is that humanity? My swollen heart of gratitude for being loved and loving, the feel of my lover's warm hand on my chilled back, the rawness of real moments when I feel pain, when I feel joy, is that God? When my body is finished living and I lay in my last moments, Will God be there or will I be alone? God only knows. God only knows. A burden of gifts. I walk with this appendage. A burden of gifts, almost weightless, yet of immeasurable weight. My mother, who brought me to birth, 
and carefully scissored the wild curl of my soul, then set me down into the ocean to swim. Her lack of confidence in my power to swim, paralyzing my power. Is it the race of perception and death we are involved in? The exhausted flesh in contest with the living spirit? For all her genteelness, my mother emerged in the bones of survival with ever-increasing cognizance of those around her. Her conscientious schoolgirl manner accompanied her final steps, her will to carry bed and body up the stairs, while a year or two before, the old black poodle rode in her lap, step by step, down the spiral black and white stairs, so she could bring him out for his walk. My first experience through an open doorway, a small neighbor neighborhood tavern, South Chicago, Mexican, drinking beer, high school, two friends, a steel workers bar, Mexican guitars, owner slightly puzzled by the three gringo boys. Why have we come to this place? It is the sky, the steel, mill, red, night, sky, the guitars, the beer, the Mexican-Spanish words surrounding us in song and speech, age 16. Age 18, the drafting room, downtown Chicago, the Loop, Frying Engineering, Copper's Company, Incorporated, dozens of men bent over all day long their drawing boards, giving birth to giant blast furnaces, rolling mills, and soaking pits. Quote, the mills are going to die, said Pete, the foreman, a big man, very kind, veteran of Pittsburgh and Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Quote, go elsewhere, he said, import steel, and newer lightweight alloys will kill the mills. Don't count on steel, he said, go elsewhere. Age 20, the mills, a job, the gate, the time clock, the guard, somber, a loaded gun on his hip, checking us out, checking us in. The rolling mill is where I work. Large, muscular Eastern European women operating the machines speak no English, many smiles. I monitor progress of the glowing hot steel ingots as they move through the rollers into rails and beams and construction rods. I peer into the high temperature soaking pits with my optical pyrometer as years afterwards I will peer into the surface of the sun while my life work flows into astrophysics and metaphysics and poetry. But for now, alone at lunchtime in the steel mill, I wander, seeing almost no one. Only the giant furnaces, the open railroad cars filled with iron ore and coke to feed those furnaces. And I follow the railroad tracks to the immense long ships, ore boats of the Great Lakes, arriving from the territories of Lake Superior, Upper Michigan, Minnesota, the iron mines. Age 38, one year married, my wife and I travel to the Sudan mine, northern Minnesota, formerly U.S. Steel. Now historic, we tour with a few retired miners, free falling in their cage, vertical shaft, deep into the earth, 2,100 feet. Headlamps and helmets we board a small narrow gauge railway, moving into large caverns, moisture dripping, 
we bend down to pick up the treasure. Pieces of ore, heavier than rock, bluish gray, iron rich. Age 57, 20 years married, my wife and I return to the Sudan mine, northern Minnesota. We free fall once again into the earth, into a different huge cavern, filled with bright lights, scientific equipment, clean, a gigantic physics, astrophysics laboratory underground. The University of Minnesota, Oxford University, and Tufts University collaborate in the search for proton decay. And it needs to be finished. Thank you. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We are here to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor powers to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here. But it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. And we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people by the people and for the people shall not perish from this earth. Thank you. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house they don't a thing pass 
not even the mouse. The children be nestled good and snug on the floor, while Ma passed the pepper through the crack in the door. Then Ma at the fireplace done roast up the ham, stir up the gumbo, and make bake the yam. Then out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter, make a sound like old Boudreaux when he fell off that ladder. <laughs> I run like a rabbit that got to the door, trip over the dog and I fall on the floor. Because when I look out the door by the light of the moon, I think, man, you're crazy. Or well, got old too soon. Because there on the bayou, when I stretch my neck stiff, I see eight alligator pulling a skiff <laughs> with a little fat drover and long polling stick. I know right away, it's got to be old Saint Nick. Mo faster and faster the gator they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Hey Gaston, Debar, Pierre, and I'll say, Jean Annette. G. Suzette, Celeste, and Renee. <laughs> to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Make crawl, alligator. <laughs> Be sure you don't fall. <laughs> like town flows cat through the treetop, he fly when a big old hound dog come and run himself by. Like that up the porch, them old gator climb with a, with a skiff full of toy and St. Nicholas behind. Then up on the roof, it sound like the hail when those eight alligators set down their long tail. <laughs> then from the chimney, a yell with a bam. St. Nicholas fell down, he sat on the yam. <laughs> Sacre, he exclaimed, my back got a hole. I done sent myself down on them red hot coals. Up to his foot, he jumps like a cat. Out to the floor where he land with a splat. He was dressed all in muskrat from his head to his foot. And his clothes is all tarnished with ashes and soot. A sack full of plaything he hold on his back. He looked like a burglar, and that's for a fact. <laughs> his eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. I think he'd been drinking the wine from Blackberry. <laughs> because his cheeks was like rose and his nose like a cherry. And second thought, I think he'd been laughing up the sherry. <laughs> With snow white chin whisker and quivering, quivering, <laughs> quivering belly, he shook when he laughed like a strawberry jelly. <laughs> but a wink of his eye and a shook of his head make my confidence, I don't got to be scared. He don't do no talking, gone straight to his work, put plaything in stockings, then he turned with a jerk. Placed both of his hands there on top of his head, cast an eye on the chimney, and then he done said, With those red hot coals and then burning hot flame, me, I ain't going back by the way that I came. <laughs> so he run out the door and he climb up the roof. You ain't no fool him for to make one more goof. He jump in his sleigh and he crack his big whip. The gator moved down, they don't make one slip. But I heard him shout as a splash and he go, Merry Christmas to all, till I see you some more. <laughs> bon Noel, mes chers. In my galaxy, an insect's win wing vibrates at a frequency 100 times a second, and its stars rotate in spiral arms. I live in one of those arms, going left. Perhaps the arms have changed rotation, for it seems that winter will never leave. It continues to bloom from tulip corpse and crocus shrivel. Although I can hear my heart thump like spring thumps on the sun, it's not because of a change in weather. I've been swept out by a tide. Yet I must conform to the pattern of this design. The motions of the earth and moon, their rhythms are part of me. Time the dictator stamps its signature on everyone. 
My galaxy spins round its center every 200 million years. And in a day, my cells will be renewed. Tomorrow may never come for many. Removed in a gasp, a flare, a screech of tearing skin, bones through bodies break, lose their form to sand. As if the lake knows, it remains sheeted in ice. And the children's raft, desolate, unsplashed by voices. It seems those voices will never rise again into a ribbon sky, predicting a warm tomorrow. The Earth's climate circles once every 100,000 years. Perhaps the weather will change. Thank you. Dreaming dreams, dreaming, vivid and real seeming. But I know I am dreaming. Chelsea and I ate waffles with coffee ice cream on the side. So satisfying, but I couldn't taste it, I was dreaming. Then a young woman from Pomperug High caught a fish much larger than I. So many bobbers on the ocean surface fishing for items that serve no purpose. Then back to the waffles, fishing accomplished. Chelsea had to call her mother. This meal was exciting and sharing felt urgent. Wait, I am awake now and the bathroom light wobbles. My mind goes round the corner to make a shadow of the ghost. After all, I was just dreaming. With smoothness, I am settled exactly where I am, lying in bed, wondering mine snuggled back in my head. When a woman thing came into the room, looming, floating, as dark as ether, without darkness or doom. My chest felt heavy, my body enclosed, in a place of a dimension I have never before known. It's a woman, she is young, no body, no face, no hair, no, sh no shape, no hair, but a presence from a dream, from the dead, from the living. Without transition on reflecting who or what she was, I was back to dreaming, dreaming dreams, dreamies. Dreams, vivid and real seeming. The new year comes on wings of silver and gold, inviting us to take a ride. She lifts us all on board and gives us a smile, calling us to come inside, calling us to come inside. The old year now has passed, it's gone on its way, taking all our troubles and our pain. The new year lets us dream our dreams once more and restores us once again and restores us once again. Ring the bells, ring the bells, ring the bells. Ring the bells. Oh, spring has come again with its promise of hope. New buds are pushing up through the ground. Time to work the plow and plant the seeds. Another season has come round. Another season has come round. summer's almost over autumn's drawing near 
time to take the harvest from the land. I feel the chilly wind upon my back. Winter soon will be at hand. Winter soon will be at hand. Ring the bells, ring the bells, ring the bells. Ring the bells, ring the bells, ring the bells. The old year now has passed, it's gone on its way. We raise another glass of wine. The new year comes again and invites us all on board and takes our dreams along one more time. And takes our dreams along one more time. Ring the bells, ring the bells, ring the bells. Ring the bells. Thank you very much.